There we go, and we're live. Ooh. Ah, cue music. <laughs> there it is. It's not legal advice. Will it will have to suffice because it's copyright, brother. Copyright, brother. Copyright, brother. All right. Morning, everybody. Morning. Hello. There we go. I, I blame Debbie for suggesting that it was going to be a seamless professional start this time around. <laughs> it jinxed things, definitely, didn't it? <laughs> oh, did. <laughs> but here we are back again for the Friday webinar number 33 for XXXIII, as we like to call it. Absolutely. Yes. Trips off the tongue, doesn't it? It does yep. indeed. So yeah. great to see people here um and we're looking forward to today um we, we are we are we've got lots of exciting things today right so. okay so let's get started <laughs> so um what we uh oh here we are today's webinar no nope. moved on one slide too many <gasps> here we are we've revealed our first thing but anyway um we've got some news items there's a public lecture with emily uh coming up conference in canada survey um, which Jane and I have been involved in, and we've got a new waffle, which we're going to talk to you about. But the main event is is uh, Fabian Frank from the University of Bamberg, who we are delighted to have with us today. Absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Jane, you advance to the next slide, and I will hand okay. over to you. Okay, okay. Well, just hot off the press as well that uh, we've just had a tweet back from Comic Relief. So okay. Um, Comic Relief are doing um, a, uh, a sort of, it's, it's next Friday, by the way, so a week today. Red so Nose Day. You've got loads of time to get involved in this. Very, very exciting. Um, on their website, you can download this poster. So we pop the link in there if you put it in the chat for everybody. Um, you can put this uh, in your window um, or you can take a photo and share it on social media. So um, in addition to tagging Comic Relief, we've suggested that you write your best copyright joke on here um, and um, you share that um, on, you know, whichever platform you're, you you want wish um so just to say chris literally like two minutes ago copyright uh comic relief have told us that copyright jokes is nice quite niche so i've i've told them it's going to be trending by the end of the day so um I, okay we've got we've got a lot to live up to really but we thought yeah share so have a look on there you can see the greatest joke ever i'm just going to wave the piece of paper but you're not going to you have to go on twitter to be able to see this i think so we're not going to reveal that great great copyright joke well i don't know Do you, shall i shall i tell it because you know how i'm so good at telling jokes okay well. yes i think you should I, I, I normally get the punchline sort of in the wrong place like before i told the joke That's I'll it, give you know it, the joke about blah 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 yeah okay so um how many copyright officers does it take to change a light bulb oh, come on say i don't know chris i i don't know how many uh, copyright officers does it take to change a light bulb well it depends on your institution's <laughs> appetite for risk <laughs> <laughs> yes okay anyone else <laughs> anyone else anyone could do better than that anyone yeah. pop something in the chat but also get yourself a poster let's get copyright jokes trending on twitter come right. on okay yes. there we are come on jenny you can do better than that as well so uh, but james bennett exciting. isn't with us today from cla but i know he's got an even worse copyright joke that i'm sure he he'll follow up. but we won't steal this thunder no um, I, won't, I won't say the punchline i won't say okay it. No, good no, no. okay next right next uh reminder we have an archive here so all the other 32 webinars well not all of them were recorded but most of them they're available for you to catch up on so the next item is copyright news so the first um, item we want to draw people's attention to next week, we have Dr. Emily Hudson, um, who is a regular contributor to this webinar, will be doing the Create Public Lecture on an Empirical Perspective on Drafting Copyright Exceptions. So definitely worth uh, tuning into that. I mean, we've had Absolutely. Emily speak here, but I think this is going to be a really good opportunity for her to talk more about what her findings were from 
you know many years of empirical research um the book is in my view essential reading for anyone who's responsible for managing uh, copyright um in an institutional environment focus on cultural heritage institutions but that does uh, include education um educational institutions as well and she's, she's spoken to many people over the years and there's some really useful insights so i would strongly recommend that and we, we hope to do some sessions as well leading on for that in even even more depth with emily in due course uh, oh yes this, yes i, say, I was gonna say definitely... watch this space yes we're, ho yeah. we're ho hoping a couple of seminars aren't we so uh, yeah. when, yeah. when we can track her down um, yeah she's not here today so uh, no. i was no. just checking yeah. okay next over to me uh yeah the abc conference so the ABC conference is the uh, Canadian um, copyright conference. Um, it is uh, is going online, um, not surprisingly. Um, so it's held in May, um, the 5th, 6th and 7th, and they've got a call for papers out. Now, just to let you know, um, it does actually close, I think it is on Monday. So it's it's pretty soon um, if you want to get in there. But um, it's, it's definitely a conference that's worth checking out and also there's been some really interesting um developments on you know how fair dealings being interpreted in canada so it'd be a really good chance to get up to speed to that obviously we had caris craig um and bob tarantino um speaking who have Canadian um, on one of our previous webinars um so lots of really interesting um uh, topics that they're looking for um, proposals for so if you've ever fancied going to Canada on Zoom then this is your opportunity so uh, yeah I, I just wanted to flag that one up but you need to get your thinking caps on over the weekend oh this is me as well isn't it it, Next, it is yeah you're on the ball yes. today yes yep. I'm, I'm totally on the did you hear my tummy rumbling as well I'm quite hungry <laughs> My microphone is very sensitive, so it can sometimes pick that up. So, uh, yes. Uh, so this is this is um, this is me um, in uh, another, with another hat on. Um, so the chair of the information literacy group. Um, but actually, Chris and I got involved in the academic reading uh, format uh, study um, about six, five, six years ago, um, where we did um, uh, the sort of UK version of this study. It looks at students' sort of preferences around reading um, academic texts. And um, if you haven't um, caught up on it, then I've got a blog post um, that gives you a bit of background, including some of the publications that came out of the earlier research. So it's all been led by um, Diane Mizraki, who's from um, UCLA, so California, and I'm um, collaborating with her and um, a colleague, um, Alicia Salas, who's at Carnegie Mellon University. And we um, started chatting um, late last year about the findings from the study, um, but kind of what those might mean um, in a time of crisis. And, um, you know, given that many of us are now pretty much exclusively supplying students with e-books. Um, so like, I'm not spoiling the kind of background to the research, but essentially the research finds that students don't really, they struggle quite a lot reading um, in electronic only. You know, they, they do like to print things out if they've got to read them in detail, um, or obviously to have access to print books. And I just really felt that it was very timely to try to do another study. So if you want to help, um, essentially, um, there's details on the blog post, um, but you can drop me a line. Um, you, it, the, the study is that is available, so it's a, a t it's been approved uh, by UCLA's ethics board. Um, it's up, and we're asking institutions in the UK to promote the survey to their students. And if then they want to get the data from their students, providing their students fill in the film that says what university are you from, then they can they can also register that with me so um so you'll be able to get uh, we're, we're certainly going to have really interesting data about students in the us students in canada and students in the uk and then uh, you would be able to get your own institutional data but i'm quite interested in looking for example at whether uk students more broadly you know are there any differences between um, their preferences and students in other countries so that's that's 
that's it from me. That was just a short update. Was it? It wasn't particularly yeah. short. Anyway, um, the uh, the other thing that we're very excited about this week is the uh, most recent episode of Copyright Waffle. Uh, we've mentioned here that Dr. Ben Marsh of the Marsh family fame, many people would have seen performing songs with his family during lockdown, parody songs, uh, worked at the University of Kent. So uh, Jane and I spoke with him last week so we've recorded an interview where he talks in depth about his um you know his, his experiences navigating the world of copyright youtube content id um algorithms taking things down dealing with music publishers um you know he talks about his copyright heroes um he and he's such a nice guy isn't he's, he he's he's he's, he's 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 lovely and he's quite a professional now after becoming an internet sensation appearing on late night tv in the us with the family performing and all sorts of things so um yeah it was it was absolutely fantastic to 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 talk to somebody who copyrights um kind of wasn't a sort of major part of their work but then suddenly um you know was you know was something that they had to consider um in a, a kind of really real and practical way and it's yeah it's just kind of the whole thing about parodies is i think lots of people have always been interested in that so it's it's one it's one to share widely isn't it definitely yes, most definitely not just for the copyright geeks okay so i i, I see that there's a question from kirsty I've, I've just put a quick answer this isn't something that we plan to talk about in depth today but i've suggested if we can come back to any other issues because what we want to do is actually move on to our guest um presenter now uh to make sure we get enough time to give caveats some time to talk so jane you're going to introduce our special guest this week yes i am so um uh, fabian um frank or uh hair doctor fabian frank um is the director of the library at the university of bamberg and um fabian and i um met in 2013 i believe it was in istanbul when uh i was at the european conference of information literacy fabian may correct me and say actually i wasn't at that conference jane it was the, the year later but i i have a very strong memory of actually sitting down next to this chap on the coach going to um a gala dinner that was held on a boat on the bosphorus so i am fairly sure i'm, I'm not making this up but anyway um yeah so we started chatting and um, found out um, that he was uh, from Bamberg in Germany and he told me lots about this beautiful city and we stayed in touch pretty much ever since. Um, so Fabian was the chair of the information literacy group um, in, in uh, Germany for a number of years, Information Competence. He invited me out to Berlin um, and um, we had a great time um, at a conference there at this huge, huge German library conference. Um, and he was also he's also um, on the IFLA information literacy section group. But um, because, you know, he obviously he, he became interested in copyright um, like like you would. Um, and uh, so he's going to talk to us a bit about the research that he did um, on copyright literacy in Germany, some of the issues that have been coming up during the pandemic. So Fabian, over to you. It's, another short little intro from me we'll get your slides <laughs> up in a moment as well <laughs> and you can confirm perhaps if this is true about the that is where we met it was definitely yeah i think it's true it's, it was in istanbul yeah i think i think so so good morning uh, to everyone uh, hello from from germany thank you very much for the invitation and for the uh, introduction jane it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, to discuss uh, copyright matters with you I, I won't show some photos of the beautiful city of Bamberg because we have uh, little time. But uh, one of the next ACL's European conferences on information literacy will take place in, in Bamberg. It was planned for, for last year, but of course it has been postponed. So I hope I, I see you all in Bamberg. Uh, one of the next years you can see Bamberg directly and personally. So now to copyright law and copyright literature in Germany. It's kind of a never ending story because uh, we had in the last years, every four or five years, a change of copyright law, new amendments. Uh, today's copyright law is from 2018 and uh, at the moment 
We have a, a bill to adapt copyright law to the requirements of the digital single market, uh, a new draft law with some minor changes uh, concerning copyright for education and research. The big issues now are uh, the uh, ancillary copyright for press publishers. Uh, I think it's a worldwide uh, issue. And the second one, at least an European issue, the responsibility of platforms for the contents uh, that their users upload, keyword uh, upload filters. That are the main points. But now to, to the copyright exceptions uh, for for, the, for education and research. We have in Germany, of course, one of the easiest ones, right of quotation. And there is a right of quoting, provided that the scope of use is justified by the particular purpose. There is no limit in length or whatever, but uh, one has to prove that the quote is really necessary for the scientific purpose and the scientific research. Now a new, next new exception that was new in 2018, reproduction for scientific research. Up to 35% of a work can be reproduced for own scientific research. It must not be transmitted to, to third parties and uh, it must not be, uh, be published. But, uh, but for own scientific research, it can be used. The, the amount uh, has been improved uh, in 2018, and I think that's a, that's a really good exception. A big issue, copyright exception for teaching. I think that's a very good exception we have in Germany. It is allowed to uh, distribute digital or, or printed up to 15% of a published work uh, to the students of a particular course. So not general in the net, but for the participants of a course. 15% of a work and also scientific uh, journals, articles from scientific journals, but only from scientific journals. So uh, it's not allowed to make, uh, make newspaper articles uh, available to the students. That's, uh, that's kind of a problem we still have. But uh, I think that's, uh, that is really used uh, nearly from all teachers at university and also, also at schools. Here we have some problems with the uh, collecting societies. I'll come back to this a bit, a bit later. Then digital reading rooms, that's an exception for libraries. Libraries are allowed to make a work from the holdings accessible to the students at terminals in their rooms. That means terminals in the library. It's not allowed uh, to make uh, the works accessible in the university networks. And users are allowed to reproduce up to 10% of a work. That's uh, uh, good exceptions for all these works, which cannot be licensed. Of course, we prefer to license ebooks. We, we prefer to buy uh, digital materials. But if that's not possible, for example, if the publisher doesn't offer it uh, to, to libraries or it's uh, much too expensive, then this is the alternative. Of course, you have also uh, paid to the collecting bodies. That's uh, in one of the next slides. New in 2000, oh no, first of all, interlibrary loan. It's uh, also regulated in the law. We may transmit electronically or in print up to 10% of a published work to individual users in the interlibrary loan. And new, also new in 2018, was an exception for text and data mining. Also very interesting for the, for the researchers and scientists. And now it's updated in the new bill 
in this year or it will be updated. The law has not yet passed our legislation. That means that reproductions for text and data mining is allowed, is allowed for scientific research. It may be made accessible for a defined group of people who are joining the research. It's not allowed to make it uh, public in general. And that's uh, the bad thing, if you want, as soon as the joint scientific research has been ended, also the public access is to be ended. Libraries may keep reproductions only as long as they are necessary. We don't exactly know what it means. Uh, how can you say how long it could be necessary? It will be interesting if this new law will be, uh, will be in effect. So we look uh, where we are at the, oh, I go back at the most important problems uh, we still have. One thing, of course, a reasonable compensation has to be paid to the collecting societies. Of course, that's, uh, that's okay. So at the moment, we have agreements with the collecting societies. That's a bit complicated in Germany because education is a matter of the federal states, so not of the of the Bundestag, not of the of Germany at all in the whole. So we have agreements for the interlibrary loan of books and we have agreements for the digital reading rooms. But we don't have agreements for the digital interlibrary loan. What means we are at the moment not allowed to transmit uh, copies digitally to our users. In fact, we have an exception from the exceptions. We now, due to the uh, pandem pandemic situation, we are allowed to transmit it digitally until the end of March. And we had it also last year for two months. But it's pretty sure that uh, this uh, exceptions will be ended. And then we still have no agreement and digital into a library loan is not allowed. And most uh, even worse, we have no agreement for the teaching exceptions. The good thing is we are allowed to do this nevertheless, but we have to keep in mind and we had to save the money and to reserve the money that uh, we will have um, to pay for it. Big problem maybe one of the biggest, that most of these exceptions for libraries, also interlibrary alone and, uh, and digital reading rooms and uh, reproduction for own scientific use are limited. They are temporarily until March uh, 2023 and nobody knows what happens at this time with the new um, legislation Will it be cut off? What will happen? So that's a really big pro problem. And that's the reasons why all our library associations need to make it to politics and politicians that without these exemptions, uh, there is no good uh, teaching and research in Germany. So our demands are that we need a general exception for teaching and research. We have at the moment another big issue concerning to e-learning. So lending of e-books that uh, concerns mostly our public city libraries. There is uh, no right, no general right to lend, to, to borrow e-books. You have to license every ebook uh, you want to lend with the publisher, and the publisher has the right to say no. So it's a fact for, for public libraries now. The new 
the really new works, the new novels, uh, they are not allowed to distribute electronically. That's a real big problem we have. And for teaching and, uh, and research, we really need a permission to make articles from newspapers uh, available to students, even with no license. Uh, how can you teach high school students if they are not allowed to read uh, articles and if the teachers are not allowed to, dis to distribute articles to their students? So our library association had issued a statement, of course that's in German, a statement to the bill, to the new bill and to the other copyright law. So we are very active in Germany, even from the library side, to force uh, hopefully a new and a better copyright law for education and research. Next point. What about the copyright literacy of the librarians we have uh, in Germany? So we made an online survey in 2019, two years ago, where we first asked the librarians uh, how to rate your copyright literacy. We had uh, over 300 answers. And uh, what you see is that uh, a large amount, more than 50% of the librarian think they are rather competent, good or very good about the exceptions for quoting and for digitization and reproduction. The knowledge goes down and is not really satisfactory in other things, especially publication rights or the exceptions for teaching. We then asked the librarians, is there a copyright officer at your library or at your university? About 40% don't have a copyright officer. Other 40% has a copyright officer or person responsible for copyright issues and, uh, and advising uh, students or researchers in the library and about 20% in the university. That's not too bad. I think maybe you can compare it with your situation in the UK. But uh, still there are 40% that uh, don't have an explicit uh, officer or person who is responsible and I don't think uh, that this number did increase over the last two years. Another question we asked was which copyright related topics are covered in your library information literacy courses. It's not a real surprise that uh, the matters uh, where the librarians uh, are competent quoting and digitization is also a matter in the courses. But uh, we really could do more in teaching the publishing rights or by teaching the teaching exception concerning copyright. So what we did now, Aya, last, last question I want to show you. Um, we asked the librarians, should copyright play a stronger role in the education of librarians? And do we want more library training courses in the copyright law? And the, uh, the librarians should, uh, should value it on a scala between 1 and 100. And you see the, the need is, is very high, about to 80 from 100 that uh, it should be, be, uh, be play a stronger role as well in the education and as well in the training of, uh, of librarians. 
we uh, compared our results with, uh, with international results. Probably you know this uh, very interesting multinational uh, study about uh, copyright literacy of information uh, professionals. And uh, first of all, we look of copyright issues regarding digitization. So internationally, it's about about 40 percent of the librarians who think they are good or very good in these issues. Our findings in Germany, what concerns scanning, librarians think they are they have a very good knowledge, about to 60 percent. But the matters of uh, digitization for teaching or digital reading from, I think we're rather in the midfield of the international results. Next look, copyright issues regarding uh, often works. Also about 20% uh, of the German librarians who think their knowledge is uh, good or very good. That's, uh, that's nearly around the international situation. Okay, my, my last slide, just three yeah, conclusions or theses which I really would like to discuss uh, with you. Librarians should fight, librarians must fight, libraries must stand for better copyright law. That is a task for librarians and also for our library association to be in the game for better copyright law. Copyright should become an integral part and a stronger part of the education and training of libraries. And libraries should incorporate copyright issues, maybe much stronger than they do now into their information literacy courses. So, I am looking forward to your opinions. Thank you very much, Fabian. Yeah, that was absolutely brilliant. Um, let me just... Yes, my... thank you very much. Yes, yeah, and really good points you're making um, on, on in your last slide as well. Um, Chris and I have just put in a couple of links to the articles, but you actually, um, you published, didn't you? Um, so I'll, I'll put a link because I think we do have your um your study um so I'll, I'll just find that and i'll put a link to the article that you wrote um about copyright literacy in germany um yeah. but it's really interesting to look at the um comparisons as well um and lots of really similar themes coming up um I, i'd quite like to go back to what you talked about at the start of the session though um where you were talking about the exceptions that you have or, or that you don't have um in germany and the fact you so you you don't have a sort of uh, an exception similar to um, illustration for instruction or illustration for teaching at the moment in German law, do you? From you know that's that's kind of the crux of what's causing so many problems. No, sir. We have we have this exception for teaching that we have it in the copyright law, but we have no agreement with the uh, with the collecting societies about that. That's a problem. So, so that, that's, 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 that's the, yeah, sorry to come in here, but just, just to yeah. make a, a really uh, important point here, there is a key difference between how copyright exceptions work in the UK compared to yeah. many countries in Europe, is that you, you have the exceptions, but they must be remunerated. So it's in the law that you, you can rely on an exception, but there needs to be money paid that then goes back to rights holder organisations. So it doesn't work in the same way where we could rely on illustration for instruction and there is no fees paid, but we have licenses um, arranged with, with uh, the collecting societies. But so uh, am I just clar clarifying that uh, Nora's question, there are, are there licensing groups in Germany? Yes, there are, and the likes of Varge Vort, which is the equivalent of CLA. Um, but can you just explain to us how that's working with the exceptions then? Presumably you are you are paying money to Varge Vort for making yeah. scans as as we would with the CLA, but you can't 
rely on an exception unless you've come to an agreement about remuneration. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. That that depends. Of course, there's these both things. Of course, it has to be exceptions in the copyright law, and we need the agreements with the licensing groups, uh, licensing uh, bodies, collecting bodies. We need both. If we don't have one, we cannot use it. And uh, the negotiations between the uh, the science of the, the universities, education, and the uh, collecting societies, the licensing groups, are, uh, have to be made by our by our federal states. That's the problem because education is a kind of federal state. So the federal states are, negoti are ne negotiating with the uh, with the licensing bodies, and then they have to come to a result which amount of money we have to pay. And now we have this situation, we don't have this agreement for teaching. Nevertheless, we allow, we are allowed to, um, to apply this uh, exceptions because both the federal states and the licensing body says, okay, you are allowed to do this, but keep in mind, you have to pay and we need to negotiate the amount. The other thing is digital into library loan. We don't have an agreement and we are not allowed to do it. So when the federal states are negotiating uh, with the collecting societies, does each federal state have to do its own separate negotiation no. or, is, or, or no, they, no, do they come they together? Do they come okay. together, we are the group of the federal state. But uh, in fact, every, state, every federal state has its own uh, interest. There are okay. richer federal states, which says, OK, we don't have to look exactly at the money, just uh, make it clear. We have other who don't have much money who say, oh, no, we have to look exactly what amount has to be paid. But of course, there is a, the, the, there is a group who negotiates with the with the lesson bodies. It's okay. called the Kultusminister Conference. Ah, right. Okay. I, I just have to say for the record, I love German words where you just <laughs> bolt them all together and make a really long word. What's your That's favorite word, Chris? What's your favorite what's his favorite <laughs> My word? My favorite word is Straßenbahn Haltestelle. As Fabian <laughs> yeah. <knows. laughs> That's a very word. Yeah. And, I have uh, Donau, Donau Dampfschifffahrtskapitäns with them. <laughs> uh, okay, well, and what is that one? <laughs> that's uh, that's a former wife of a captain of a ship on the Donau River. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, that so word could be really useful, actually, it, it for when would, we go to really uh, Bamberg. Um, I, I think. Um, but can I go back to the the, the, the question about um, the, the the issues you have with your educational exceptions and the coming of the digital single market directive um, where you have changes coming through um, the, there is a new illustration for teaching exception at the EU directive level is that going to help the situation for you in Germany or will they end up sticking with something which is still this uncomfortable you know federal clutch I think uh, especially for teaching it would help us not because uh, exceptions will be, there will be more exceptions. We have mm. the same exceptions as the uh, EU um, digital uh, market um, has regulated. But in fact, now also this exception for teaching is limited, is temporarily. And now the plan is it, uh, it must not be temporarily, so it will be extended. Uh, because uh, European market, European Union says so. So that's why it helps this uh, EU um, directive. Um, yeah, that's why the EU directive helps us. Okay. But not okay. really in the, in the exceptions itself. Right, I see. Okay, tricky. Um, I think uh, Jane wants to move on to, to, to some of the, I should say, Urheberrecht competence questions um, around <laughs> copyright literacy for librarians. Um, you, I'm just, stop you, just, off now. you just love it. You just love okay. it. <laughs> Jane. Um, 
yeah, Evelyn picked up a point um, actually about librarianship courses. Um, so you said that um, in the survey um, that, that librarians felt that they should learn more about copyright and that came through quite strongly um, when we did our research. We actually did some research as well of um, uh, library and information students um, a couple of years ago, which, um, you know, found that, that that they felt that it wasn't something that was covered um, in enough detail in their courses. Is, you know, is, has it been, has that been discussed in Germany about whether, um, you know, there should be more copyright literacy um, education for librarians when they're qualifying? Um, and, and might that be dealt with by the German Library Association or something? Yeah, we, we discuss it, especially from the point of view which qualification is needed for librarians to teach uh, copyright issues. And that's maybe a kind of dispute. So do you need a, a legal education to mm -hmm. teach copyright literacy? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. is it sufficient that you have your, your library uh, education which, uh, which has more focus on, on copyright issues? So that's a that's an issue in the in the German uh, discussion, but uh, I think among teaching libraries, teaching librarians, it's widely accepted that copyright must be an issue in their courses. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's that's a, a an interesting point as well because we've had that whole discussion of well, are you you're not trying to turn librarians into lawyers, um, you know, and and I think. For Chris and I, that's very much why we think this is about copyright literacy rather than just learning loads about the law so that, you know, you, you've got to kind of, as a librarian, you've got to interpret it, you've got to apply it, you've got to kind of understand, you know, okay, so the law might say this, but, you know, there's factors here um, to do with risk um that you know where it's it's not always clear cut um right. and obviously you know you talked a bit about interlibrary loan and things like that you know there's but lots of point, services yes, so, of, of course, course it's absolutely clear that we don't allow to give legal advice since yeah. we are yeah that must be that must be absolutely clear and uh, i'm not a liar too, and uh, I'm just a librarian and physicist, okay. Um, but there's no legal advice, but I no. think we, we, have the, we have the practice to, to see what's, what's interesting and what does and what does our what do our users need? Yeah. To know. yeah. I, I think yeah. I mean it's an interesting point. I, I think to talk about you know librarians are not lawyers. Um, it is something that keeps coming up, but I think what what we well, I think what we do see is a difference between people who are thinking about litigation, and clearly if there is a likelihood of litigation, then you need lawyers involved in that. Um, and then what librarians tend to deal with is the questions that come up all the time, an understanding about how you manage those risks and how you, what practices you put in place in your institution and what uh, behaviours you would expect from library users. Um, but the mention of litigation, I mean, there, there have been some fairly major uh, legal uh, cases in Germany, and I'm thinking particularly about the um, Darmstadt case with yep. the the digitization yep. and, and making available those materials in, in in a at a university so what 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 impact has that had on german institutions yeah yeah so we had this uh, this lawsuit uh, before 2018 before this new copyright law went into effect and the the new copyright law make some but most of the issues of this uh, of this lawsuit uh, very, very clear. So uh, before 2018, it was not clear uh, which amount of work can be uh, made available uh, to students. Uh, there was uh, the, uh, the formulation in the law was small parts of the work, but are small parts 10% or 15% or 5%. That was one issue of the of the lawsuit, and now it's clear it's fifteen percent. So uh, today we don't have such 
large lawsuits in Germany about uh, libraries and, and copyright. But uh, the last lawsuits we have um, made clear that we need more concrete legislative legislation. And that it, was what happened. Do you happened. think it might be possibly made, did it, did it perhaps make the library community a little bit more nervous in Germany? Because I think that's that's often said in the UK that, well, we haven't had any sort of, um, you know, we haven't had any case law. We haven't had any universities involved in this. It's not to say that that's made us complacent at all, actually. I think there's still quite a lot of anxiety in the UK. But I just wondered if if it had had, had kind of made the library community feel we're we going to need to do some more about this. Oh, I, I won't say we are we are nervous in general, but we are very uh, cautious. OK, that's yeah. the point. Very, very cautious. And uh, if it's not really clear, most librarians says we don't do it uh, if we are in danger to risk a, yeah. a law conflict or law suite. Okay. I mean, that's, and that's, that's even not very good because uh, if you're always too cautious, then you, you don't use some you don't of use the, you don't use the exceptions absolutely yeah 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 no we've we've talked about that as well um i'm just wondering um if anybody would like to ask fabian a question this is your opportunity if you want to come on the mic if you've got something that you want to say um chris and i can ask him questions um probably <laughs> until the end of the day so it's always good to chat to yeah. you fabian they're really interesting yeah. but um, has anyone well, got I'll anything <laughs> Lovely. Um, just to say, while you're thinking, if you do have any other questions, I've put a link in the chat to uh, the the University Darmstadt case, um, and it's yeah. an Eiffel webinar that I, I it was a few years back, but it was um, Dr. Niels Rauer who who was the lawyer in that case explaining it, um, and I, I remember listening to that. It's a really great webinar if you want to get into the detail of it. Um, I mean, I, I I guess the question. The big elephant in the room is maybe not a question you could really answer, Fabian, but it's about the fact that previously the UK was going to be fairly well aligned to Germany in the area of copyright law, but yeah. but now now we're not. I mean, I don't know whether you have any thoughts about the, the relationship between the UK and Germany when it comes to education and and trying to consider legal act uh, legal you know, what happens with, with the law? I mean, do you have, does, does Bamberg have links with UK universities where these legal questions are now more tricky or, or is it not so much of an issue at the moment? Oh, I, I mean, I think, of course, we have links, exactly, uh, uh, especially exchange in students, uh, students exchange, of mm. course, and of course, it's a very bad, bad situation. Um, how which, which opportunities are for, for UK students to come to Germany and for German students and researchers to go to the UK. I mean, of course, this is a big issue we discuss and of course we all regret uh, the UK decisions to leave the... Um, I think really most of the Germans and all of the researchers and the universities uh, regret it uh, very much. So, in fact, I have no idea what uh, the, um, the leave means for, for copyright law. <laughs> mm. yeah. Well, it's, it's being discussed in what it means in the UK, obviously, because, you know, it means we have the potential for our law to move further away from, um, you know, from Europe and also um, you know, for us not to not not to obviously we're not going to implement the digital single market. Um, Nora's just popped a question into the chat, which is about um, whether you have any exceptions um, on copying for students with disabilities in Germany. Yeah. Presumably, you do the yeah, Marrakesh maybe, Treaty. Well, I think it's the Morocco. Uh, uh, Marrakesh Charter, Treaty. Yes. Yes. No, yes. Morocco yes. Treaty. Again, of course, I, I didn't mention it yet. We have it, so it's allowed to to copy and to reduce it for for impaired students, for students with uh, uh, which uh, yeah, blind students or whatever. Yeah, of course, we have it. Yeah, 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 
yeah okay all right no that's great well that's uh, we've had some really great discussions i think um you're going to stay on the line um aren't you fabian so if anyone thinks of anything pop it in but um i'll i'll take us back um to our slides I, but i just want to say and, thank and you course, so much yeah. 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 <laughs> Go on. You say, you say it, Chris. You say. You. I was just going to say thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was great but, to have yeah. you join us, and I think it's really useful to to just do the compare and contrast uh, between how the different laws actually impact in practice. So um, it's tricky for everyone at the moment. We can understand some of your pressures. Um, and we definitely want to keep you keep in touch with you um, and under the auspices of our copyright and online learning special interest group as well, where we want to have a, a much more international outlook um, and rather than just focusing only on what happens in the UK. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I love to, to keep contact with you. Maybe do it anyway. So <laughs> and talk about copyright. Sure. Of course. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, th yeah, thank you, Fabian. Um, don't don't run away. Don't run away. We haven't finished. No, um, I'm but staying. we we, uh, we 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 always like to leave people with something nice and fun as well. And it's a good one this time. I think you're. Gonna well, like before we get to that, before we get to that, we do have to um, just quickly touch on what we're doing next time. So we've mentioned the Copyright and Online Learning Special Interest Group, and we are actually having an update from the group in two weeks time. What have we been up to? The various working groups and plans that we have. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll be looking looking forward to that one. Um, Claire Kidwell um, put out a, a, on a, a link to a recent survey from uh, the Music Library Association, YAML. Um, and of course, we just jumped on that immediately and said, OK, so when are you presenting on it? So she couldn't get away uh, with, with <laughs> without presenting. So we've got um, her coming up in, I think we're doing two weeks time, aren't we? Uh, the two yeah, weeks I think after it's, that, I think it's the, the ninth, the ninth, yeah. Um, yeah. The question of access to audiovisual content under license as well. Uh, so I saw Kirsty raise that right at the outset. Um, and Helena unfortunately couldn't stay with us. So we we know that the situation when it came to, came to Brexit created an issue where Box of Broadcasts had um, uh, an allowance for students, usually based in the UK, but temporarily in the EU, could access Box of Broadcasts. Um, but now that's changed with the with Brexit. There is no reciprocal portability regulations in place for copyright law, which meant that uh, ERA couldn't provide the license and therefore Box of Broadcasts couldn't provide that service. So that's why institutions have now been getting a refund if they paid for that extra license fee. We've spoken to Helena under the auspices of the Copyright Negotiation and Advisory Committee, because we know that there are, um, you know, the, the pandemic is changing. We are hopefully going to see people returning to campus, but we know that there's still a need to get remote access to content. And in fact, mm. even like putting the EU question aside, um, for many years we've been asking ERA to allow access to recordings from UK TV and radio to any student anywhere in the world. But as she said, it's a very complex issue. Um, we know that production companies, film companies are very protective of their copyright. And uh, we will, uh, the, 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 we've got access to some BBC News content and BBC Parliament because the rights issues are fairly straightforward. The other rights issues are very complex. So what we're proposing is getting to having a workshop where we can actually look through what kind of content is it that we need access to mm. so that we can help target what era might be able to do uh, on on our behalf to try to speak to the right uh, groups the right rights holders and try to unblock where those are it's quite a big piece of work um, and, 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 and I think we need to manage expectations of what we can do but certainly we want to try to support you know what 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 are our needs from the education community yeah that's useful Kirsty popping in the chat as well that um 
uh, film four was one of the kind of things, you know, mm -hmm. obviously film content um, is, is definitely something we know <laughs> is, is, is a particular issue. So a channel like film four that has a whole wide range of films on it, um, you know, to have just, I think, letting Helena know that that's the kind of content we want is going to be really useful. So Fabian, we've got loads of lovely um, comments coming up um, uh, in the chat with people thanking you. And um, uh, I do hope you might come back and join us again for another session. We're hoping to have um, regular slots with, with people from the um, international copyright literacy community. Um, but if you, anyone has um, other topics that they want to talk about in one of our webinars as a more of a discussion, um, or if they've got something to present on, then as ever, please drop us a line. Um, but before we go, we have got one final thing, haven't we? Correct. Well, yes, we do. <laughs> I think you hyped okay. it up a bit much. It's not that amazing. But anyway. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> move the slide on. Move the slide on. Okay, so, so this was you had been listening to the Adam Buxton podcast. Oh, look! Where's my face has been disappeared. Right, okay, we have to stop that. Let's no, see if we can actually no, get no, the, no, the slide no. there. Because you've done a very clever piece of uh, photoshoppery, haven't you? I had, I had. So some of you um, think that that we're the original Chris and Jane or Jane and Chris. But in fact, we're not, are we? Of course, we're not. No. There's, a, there's a very, very famous Jane and Chris, or otherwise known as Torville and Dean, the ice skaters. And um, yeah, I stumbled across this podcast of them chatting and it's um, with Adam Buxton. And um, it, it, it was quite amusing to me, partly because he's interviewing two people we sometimes the two of us try to interview one person um and um we um there we go <laughs> we thought what what do you think to that so i mean it is it is a thing of beauty isn't it i um i i think people can definitely now envisage us um taking to the ice um, but if if you do want to have a listen um, to uh, if you're if you're like a, a child of the 1980s, remember their bolero, then um, it's definitely one um, to have a listen to. But for me, it was certainly it was quite interesting just hearing this uh, constant uh, talk about the original Jane and Chris. So that's something yes. to leave you to. I'm impressed that Caroline met them at the Nottingham Ice Rink as well once. So uh, I'm sure they weren't as fun and animated as us, were they? <laughs> okay everyone that's it it's 12 o'clock have a good uh oh my goodness there's a really good pub <laughs> Copyright. <I> <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> let's stop the recording there everyone and uh, thank you. you all see you in two weeks <laughs>